Good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Wyndham Library. Today we're in conversation with Judy. My name is Denise Hughes and I'm from the local community at radio station 88.9 FM. Now today it's my great pleasure to be interviewing Judy who is one of Australia's most successful writers with over 10 novels published including two children's novels. But before embarking on your writing career you had a very successful career as an actor in such programs as The Box, Sons and Daughters, Prisoner and a very long stint in Home and Away as Alf's Wife from 1988 to 2000 as well as stage work both in Australia and London. Now while working on Home and Away, Judy wrote her first novel Eye in the Storm and started her journey as one of Australia's most successful authors. Thank you for joining us today Judy. Oh thanks for having me along Denise. G'day gang. G'day. <laughs> Now, before you arrived, I had so many people here telling me how they were just hanging out for Tiger Men because they've just loved your previous novels. Yeah. That's lovely to hear. Yes. Good, good. Definitely. <laughs> Big fan. There'll be no cooking done for the next month. <laughs> your husbands all hate me, don't they? <laughs> now, before you actually began writing novels, you first wrote some episodes of Neighbours back in the 1980s. Was that your first professional writing job? Uh, no, no. I'd been writing um, some stuff for the theatre in London when I was doing reviews in uh, repertory and everything there. Uh, and I'd written um, some radio comedy series. Oh, really? Uh, for, yes, yes, ABC. Um, and, yeah, I'd been dibbling and dabbling in writing for... And I also wrote... Um, the Neighbours was my first foray into um, soap writing, okay. into commercial television writing. Um, then I wrote for about a year in a, an ill-fated series by a daughter called Possession. I don't know if anybody ever saw it. Was that a television was, series? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It was a weird series. It went, I think it might have gone as long as two years. Um, but uh, it fizzled out, as many do, but it, it was great fun because it was a sort of like a, a sex and sin type, you know, so you could write some raunchy stuff, you know, I loved that. Feel <laughs> yeah. yeah. like the box? Uh, yeah, that's right, yes, yes. Yeah. it was a bit, a bit boxish. Yeah, <laughs> I liked that. Um, so then it was my natural sort of extension was to go into narrative form, you know, to write prose, to write books. Now you started, as I said, you started writing your book, um, I Am The Storm, while on Home and Away. Now, how did you find that? Because you were in a, a five-day-a-week television series, but also writing a novel. How did you cope with that when you first started? Well, I and the Storm and I and the City were two children's novels. Mm. Um, uh, and uh, it, I then decided to, to branch out into adult novels and uh, stuck to the... Kiss principle, that's, you know, keep it simple, stupid principle, you know, uh, which we actors always call it the kiss principle and write about what you know, so. And that, of course, was the glitter. The, the, the glitter game, yeah. That was your first adult novel, that's yeah. right. So when I was doing Home and Away, just to, to get back to, you know, the original aspect of the question, how difficult to, to write and act at the same time, um, I was in Home and Away for 13 years. It takes me two years to write an adult book, uh, uh, one of my adult fiction books. I, I don't want to bring out a book a year. I, I, you know, I, it, that doesn't uh, doesn't intrigue me. Um, and by the time I had left home and away, I had had four books published, wow. four adult fiction. So that means that for eight out of the, if you do your maths, mm. if yeah, eight out of the thirteen years I was writing uh, novels. And I think that's uh, principally because it's a funny thing, but actors don't become actors to r report for work year after year after year, if you know no, what I mean. that's not to, really to, how an actor's life is, well, is it? Well, not, not for me, and I shouldn't mm. really speak for all actors when I say it. I know my darling friend Ray Ma, who's a very dear mate, and mm. he plays Alf. Uh, Ray, Ray would be happy to stay there for the long haul. Uh, we both love working together. Um, I love working with, with everybody in Home and Away, but particularly with the olds who are mates of mine. Mm. Uh, we worked very slickly, very professionally. We were very proud of what we did, but I did ultimately get a bit bored. Uh, my, my thrill, and I think the thrill for many, many actors, most actors, particularly those who emanate from the theatre, is really the danger uh, and the uncertainty of your profession. You know, mm -hmm. what's the next role I'm going to play? You know, you don't want a nine you, you to five sort of a Well, job no, almost. and I mean, how long can you explore one character? Mm. I mean, admittedly, soap writers, and I've been one, soap writers are, to my mind, they're, they're mental gymnasts. I mean, they have to really, you're writing, well, in a show like Home and Away, you're writing for 23 characters at once. You have ridiculous parameters set on you because, I mean, some 
uh, actors have within their their contract, uh, they're on only one episode. Uh, uh, right. week. Some are on three episodes. Some yeah. sign up, they want the bit. Well, if the, if, the, if the character is important enough for them to be asked to do so, they might sign up for a minimum of four episodes. So they, they're going to be, some are going to be used a lot more than others. There's going to be uh, outside broadcast, was in my day limited to four, maybe five minutes at the outside. Yeah. There's budgetary things, you can't shove all those fancy cars over a cliff. Uh, the producers won't let <laughs> you write that in. Um, so, and, and you always have one storyline going up, one storyline peaking and one storyline coming down. There's sort of a formula to writing so. But in the meantime, you have to accommodate all those characters. Yes. You have to and keep track of them all as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's really a very, very difficult sort of form. But, I mean, apart from that aspect of it, for an actor, uh, it can become a bit same old, same old, mm. I found. I mean, occasionally mm. my storylines were really peaking and up there, but at the same time I was rather hoping they wouldn't because I wanted to write my own books. <laughs> and <laughs> the, these storylines and writers would come up, particularly the passionate new, new kids on the block, and they'd come up and they'd say, now, Jude, look, we just so love your character. And, you know, you, you're writing and everything. Can you give us a, a few beaut maybe feed ideas. We're looking at where to take Elsa. And I'd say, no, darling, you just, you do it. You, you, you're doing a great job. <laughs> and I'd think, oh, please, can I just do the diner and serve people a few cups of coffee so I can get back to writing my book? So um, you, you were moving on in your mind to being a writer at that point? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. It, yes, I mean, not, not swapping being an actor for being a writer, but uh, I needed, uh, a, you know, something that was artistically thrilling me more mm -hmm. than playing Elsa, frankly. Because, as you said, she'd paid her for such a long time. Mm, yeah, there's that. Mm. And also, I mean, quite frankly, and, uh, and it's, 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 it's absolutely true, Betty Davis always said that the bitches are the best roles. <laughs> and, I mean, she's right. Yes. And there's one reason. They're the ones they remember, isn't it? Well, yeah. there's the main reason is, of course, the writers all write, like to write for the bitches. Yes. So the bitches get the best roles. The bitches and the bastards. I love writing bad people <laughs> and and that's why the actors all love acting bad people frankly i mean how many interesting ways can you say please you don't look well sit down can i get you covered it gets boring <laughs> absolutely <coughs> now of course you had quite a long history as well on the stage also in london mm -hmm. now that of course came into your second novel center stage yep. Now tell us a little bit about She's your been time. reading up on this. <laughs> You've just been skimming through the back cover blurbs. Come on. Uh, tell, yeah. me, tell me a little bit about your time in London, because of course that was during the sixties, late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, mm. and 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 the fact is, I do. You know, when you when you mention the books and then we relate them to a period of my life, um, I I I do need to hearken a bit to the books too. Mm. Not simply because I want you all to buy all of my backlist. Mm. There is that, of course. But <laughs> oh, we no, have a lot here. <laughs> no, it, it it is a fact that. Having written The Glitter Game, which was based around television, yes. which was an absolute frothy send-up of television. Did you have many people coming to you saying, is that me, Jude, is that me? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, as a matter of fact, what was interesting, remind me we were up to the centre stage, because that really... <laughs> no, that, it's really... I mean, I, I, I can go on forever. I just keep losing the plot. That's the only problem. Um, but, no, with centre stage, indeed, uh, my publishers then, I'm now currently with Random House, yes. who I absolutely adore. Uh, my first three books were with um, uh, Pan Macmillan, whom I also adored. I, I, I've had a lo lovely long you know, time with, uh, with beautiful publishing people. Um, but uh, uh, I remember James Fraser of uh, Pan Macmillan coming up to me and uh, everybody thought this was kiss and tell. And of course mm. at the time I was doing Home and Away, so they all thought, I mean, the glitter game isn't based around home and away talk. If it's based around anything, and, and it sure as hell is, it's, uh, it's based around the box. Mm. Uh, and many of the people are eminently recognisable. Um, <laughs> and to give actors their due, the only ones who were offended were those actors who couldn't see themselves in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, true. Oh, yeah, the egos of actors, I know. But, um, Did but you get, if you had, dare you not include me, Judy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, just a, a little fits of pique. But, um, but, but the, the, the Pan Macmillan were a little worried that uh, I have a, a, a mogul there who owns the network, you know, mm. owns the network, and uh, I mean, you know, Kerry Stokes, Cro Cross, you know, Packer Cross, all this sort of thing. And, and uh, he's married and his wife is uh, bisexual. So I have a, you know, a bit of a lesbian, you know, uh, send up scene sort of thing, you know. And, and they said, and the, 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 this mogul also owns a whole 
string of uh, resorts um, up in tropical uh, North Queensland, Queensland yeah. which was very suspiciously uh, Stokes, of course. <laughs> uh, no, I don't mean Stokes, I mean um, Christopher Stokes. Yeah. I adore yeah. Kerry Stokes, by the way. Yeah. I mean, he's he doesn't put a foot wrong for me as far as his treatment of actors go. Oh, he is a real gentleman with his actors, he's fabulous. And, uh, but anyway, Christopher Skates, different kettle of fish, <laughs> remember Christopher Skates, of course. And anyway, so James Fraser is saying, well, we're a little bit worried that Christopher Skates might see that you've painted Pixie as a lesbian, and Pixie Skates, <laughs> to the best of our knowledge, is not. And uh, I said, well, I tell you what, Christopher Skates at this stage had escaped Australia to Mallorca. He was the most wanted Many man Australia, in yes. Australia. I said, if, if, if Christopher Skates wants to come back to Australia to take me to the cleaners, <laughs> I'm going to be a national hero. <laughs> but indeed, I changed it and I made him an, an oil man and he had an island off the coast. I didn't make him the resort mogul. I thought, oh, well, that'll keep them Changed happy. it a little bit. Yeah. yeah but I mean, I would have loved <laughs> Skates to have come back to the other. <laughs> so anyway, that, that was, that was centre stage. Mm. Now, Glitter Game, a great deal of Glitter Game, is based around, well, not the really saucy, sexy part, but a great deal of the, the theatrical part of Centre Stage is certainly autobiographical. Uh, mm. There are many of the roles that I played, there's, there's, um, uh, there, there's a lot there. Uh, but I didn't want to become formula, and I didn't mm. want, they were then spruiking me as Australia's Jackie Collins, because okay. of this frothy send-up, yes. uh, you know. Uh, take the mickey like out of... Like a Hollywood wide type... Uh, right. Yeah, and yeah. there's no way. I'm mm. not remotely... Un, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about labels and that to do it anyway. I'm <laughs> a very poor dresser. Um, but uh, so I decided, OK, I will make the next book about theatre. They, they put me on a two-book deal, which I, from then on, I have avoided. I don't like the, the responsibility of a two-book deal. Did you find that as a bit of a pressure to do that? A huge pressure, yes, huge pressure. Yeah. But I did promise them that the next book would be set in the theatre and the next book after that, so that they could promote me as writing about the performing industry, uh, would be based in, in, um, Film. in movies. Yeah. yeah. So this second book, Centre Stage, I do not know where the central character of Alex Rainford comes from. Oh, I do not okay. know, because this is a character obsessed with death. Mm. Uh, it's got a very, very black, dark side to it. It goes over two generations too, so you get the parental and the child factor in this uh, main, main character's life. And um, it, it, it has a, a really, I, I never thought that I was preoccupied with death or <laughs> needing to watch it happen the way Alex does or needing to create it. It's happening. Um, so a, a friend of mine, actually, she's a part of our agency and she's got a lovely deep brown purple voice and she read it and she was fascinated and she's an avid reader. And she said, oh, Judy, she said, I'm seeing you through entirely different eyes. <laughs> and I said, yes, so am I. And then anyway, just, just to finish with this, you know, this, uh, th these first three books, the third book, uh, I, I thought, right, I, when I dived into it, I thought, right, I'm, I want to spread my wings. I want to, um, it will be about movies. I know about movies, but I brought my, ancestor mogul out in 1850 and took him to, uh, uh, you know, the ancestor mm. of my one day to become mogul, brought his grandfather and the grandfather's brother out as remittance men in the 1850s on the Bark Henrietta and settled them in the Barossa Valley near the Grange and Dr Penfold and they were, <laughs> they, they were winemakers. Um, so I had to obviously research winemaking, uh, you know, um, oenology and and viticulture and all of this sort of stuff. And so was all, this the first time that you had to do a lot of research for your book? Yes, mm. they all require a certain amount of research. Mm. Because you're going one, back more historical. Well, in yeah, I mean, years. this one I'm dealing yeah. with times in which I do not live. Mm. And then I'm suddenly 100 pages into it and I've got to the grandson who's going to become the movie maker, but I'm in the rag trade and, and I'm in, well, razor time in Surrey Hills. I'm mm. in, you know, Tilly Devine and, and Kate Lee time. Um, in, in, in the Depression years in Surrey Hills, and that was when. So this was a real, um, you know, epiphany in a way. I mean, I suddenly thought, I love doing this. I'd always thought research would be scary, and it is, it's, it mm. remains so. But it also becomes inspirational. And from that time on, I just, I virtually left show business behind and dived in. So that's a very long answer <laughs> to one question, but I had to cover all of that yeah, really. Yeah, fair enough.